Hello, my name is Vesa Juvonen, and in this video we'll have a look on the new update in the BNP provisioning engine, which was part of the June 2016 release. We're going to use the PowerShell this time as the example engine, but obviously the changes are available within the core component, so you can take advantage of this API improvements, also from a provider hosted add-in perspective or in the managed code in general. Uh, first of all, uh, let's get started with the, with the PowerShell site. Uh, so the PowerShell, uh, you can get access on the PowerShell uh, from uh, the BMP PowerShell address. So office github.com office dev BMP PowerShell is the easiest way to download uh, the command line set. And in here, uh, you can actually find the source code, but you don't need to worry about the code itself. Uh, if you scroll down, you can actually see the, the individual options to get to install uh, the PMP PowerShell. So you can actually download an MSI package, or if you're using a Windows 10, uh, you can just run this install module uh, commands and they will just install the PowerShell for the particular environment. It's really important to notice uh, there's a, a different versions of the BMP PowerShell uh, for different uh, platforms. So there's a separate version for SharePoint 2013, SharePoint 2016, and SharePoint Online. And this is because the SharePoint, uh, the BMP PowerShell uh, is taking advantage of the CSAM client side object model, and the client side object model is different between the different versions. But the, anyway, the easiest way to get actually started is to go to the releases or let's go back on the front page and click releases here in the top section. Uh, so clicking a releases, you can always find the latest release and then install particular uh, a version which you want to use within your code. Today, uh, we'll have a look on the on the provisioning engine and how it has been evolving within the June 2016 release, uh, because there's a one really, really cool uh, an improvement in here. So in my case, uh, we're going to use my uh, test tenant, which is vesaj.sharepoint.com. And I do have a template site available within my tenant. And this is my template site. So as a business end user, you can actually design the site any way you want. Uh, and what I mean with that one is that let's say that we go to the site contents. Uh, this is a relatively simple uh, team site, which has a custom branding. And it's using the oslo.master out of the box master page. So let's actually create a new uh, a library here uh, and let's call that uh, uh, there we go there's the document library and let's call that a specifications uh, and clicking create that will create the library to the site and slightly modify the front page as well we can say that there's some uh, custom content within the front page uh, just to demonstrate the functionality and let's add that uh, specifications library being visible here as well so let's add that below the, the documents library. Uh, so let's do insert and web part and specifications and add. And that's going to then add uh, the specifications library available within the template. So we're going to use this site as our template site. And the key, really the key power of the BMP provisioning engine is that you can use an existing site as your template. So we can actually uh, create the site and modifications, site columns, content types, regional settings, language settings, uh, whatever, uh, using the browser. And then you can create new sites or new configurations and templates out of this site uh, using the PowerShell or using then managed code. So let's switch to the PowerShell side. I've already installed uh, the PowerShell setup using the, the MSI package. Uh, so the BMP PowerShell release is an MSI in my particular case. So I'm going to actually move into the I, uh, PowerShell ISC, uh, which is available in here. So connecting to an existing site, uh, we wanted to connect to that uh, template site. So let's actually connect there. Uh, I think it was called a template site. So let's actually double check that. A template is our site name. So switching back on the PowerShell, uh, I can connect to that site uh, by running the Connect SPO online. In my case, uh, I'm using a, a credentials uh, from a credential manager. So I don't actually need to set the credentials in the call. Just as well, I could actually use the credentials credentials or request the credentials from the end user uh, to sign in against that site and then use those credentials or use current credentials, which does work uh, for on-premises deployments, but not against SharePoint Online. 
So uh, now if we run get SPO uh, web, uh, we can see that we are in the context of that site, a template site, uh, and then we can either modify that site using PowerShell as well. But in this case, what we're interested in is, is getting the template out of the site. Now, uh, the classic way of getting the template out of the site uh, is by running the get SPO provisioning template uh, and then giving an XML name, uh, XML file name for it. And we use a switch called persist branding file. So we'll make sure that when we're extracting the template, we'll actually get the branding files outside of the site as well. So we're able to apply the needed branding, in this case, uh, essentially the, uh, the, the custom theme, uh, the, the target site as well. And right now what the engine does, it actually goes through uh, the individual site or this template site. It uh, compares the template site to out-of-the-box theme site, and then it creates the template file out of it. Um, and it's an XML-based uh, template file, which has its own schema. Um, the schema itself uh, is actually defined. So if we go to the BMP uh, provisioning, if you go to the BMP PowerShell, I'm going to just use that as my my location, if we go to the provisioning schema, we can actually find details around the provisioning schema itself. And the address was github.com office dev BNP provisioning schema. The provisioning schema is versioned uh, individually. Uh, so the provisioning schema is something, uh, it has its own uh, schema files, a verification file, and it ver it's versioned uh, individually outside of the engine as well. Right now, the latest version of a schema when we are recording this video, as an example, is not yet implemented in the engine side, but it's already defined as a schema option uh, and it will be implemented in the engine uh, in autumn 2016. So coming back on the on the PowerShell side uh, we can see that the files are being output uh, to the to the C temp provisioning uh, demo BNP demo XML folder. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to actually uh, execute the second line, uh, which is exporting the template using the BNB file format. And this is something new, which we introduced in, 20, uh, in the uh, June 2016 release. So I'm going to actually start executing that. And while that's being executed, let's go to that folder and have a look what we have there right now. So. Um, we exported the file in an XML format and we set persist uh, branding files. So we actually get the theme files outside of the site as well and the logo file. And the XML file itself, uh, if we have a look on quickly on that one, it actually is based on that provisioning schema. So it contains, for example, uh, definitions around the site logo, what's the welcome page, what's the regional settings, what's the supported UI languages, uh, what are the auditing settings within the site. So all of that is getting uh, copied as well. Provisioning back entries, security settings. So if you actually want to reapply always a template with the default uh, permissions, all of that is, is getting exported as well. You can modify this XML. So as an example, we can get rid of this BMP security settings and when we're applying the template then that particular setting obviously wouldn't be applied um, and you can combine uh, these templates as well so you can actually have a one template for lists one template for branding one template for for other settings as well so you can apply multiple templates to a target site based on obviously your requirements uh, one thing to notice also on the template uh, is that when we are exporting the template, you are able to say what kind of items do we want to uh, uh, export. So we can use the handler switch uh, where the default entry is all, but we can actually export uh, templates uh, or only specific uh, settings out of the template. So we can, for example, say that we want to export content types and fields or, or lists to a one template, and then we will have this kind of a sub template which we can apply to a target site. In this case, we actually wanted to generate the whole template out of the site. Now, we did execute the, the, the second line, which was the PMP file and file names. And let's have a look on that. Uh, if you have installed uh, the PowerShell, uh, you will get a, a file type uh, configuration to your machine as well. So you will get a PMP file, uh, which has its own default uh, icon as well. And the BNP file, uh, essentially, what we just exported is just the one file, which actually contains all of these items in a single file. And the whole point of this one is that it, it's a, it is an open XML uh, file. 
So if I actually rename this as a .zip file and I open up that, that one up, uh, we can see that it's an open XML file. It's a zip file. Well, open XML is kind of using the zip as the format. And it's a structural file, which is then having uh, the definition of the file. And it also has uh, individual files inside of it. So now what we basically have is a one file containing all of the branding files, the PNP files, the logo file, uh, and also the template file inside of it. So what we can do now uh, is essentially copy this one file, the BMP file, or send it uh, to any environment or send it to your colleagues in an email or your customer as a, as a file, and they can reapply that to their environment uh, without any issues or uh, easily. The, the challenge, and obviously there shouldn't be any issues on applying that um, as well. The challenge of the classic approach is that when we are exporting, exporting these templates, you might actually get to the situation if you're exporting multiple templates to a one folder where the theme files or branding files are overlapping. And that might cause a kind of a significant mess within your template uh, storage location. Uh, using the BMP file, you're able to then create individual templates, which contains all what's needed for that particular site configuration. Now, let's actually use that file uh, to apply that to an existing site. So first of all, uh, the BMP provisioning engine does not, the provisioning engine does not explicitly create the target site. So the provisioning engine applies configuration. So we need to have that target site available. So I'm going to use the BMP PowerShell commandlet, which is the new SBO tenant site uh, to get my target site available. Uh, so I'm essentially uh, providing its, its new URL or the URL for the target site, a title, who's the owner of the site, and then I can apply the time zone setting for it as well. That seems to be a central European time, what's being set for that site. We can see that the command has been executed, uh, but like always within the SharePoint Online, uh, the site provisioning command is actually asynchronous. So if we go to my admin UI and we refresh the UI, we can see that that uh, request for a new site collection uh, is being queued up. Uh, and right now that site collection is getting uh, created. So we need to obviously make sure that the site collection does exist before we can apply the template to that particular URL. Since the site collection creation will take a while, uh, let's actually pause the video for a while until that uh, site collection has been created. So we're able to have a look on what we have as a target site and then how the settings and configurations are being applied to it in a, in a while. So I'm gonna pause the video and we'll kind of continue when the site has been successfully created. Good, and now we can see that the site has been created. So our new site uh, is being provisioned. Uh, site collection is waiting for us. And so let's go and have a look on that site uh, before we apply any settings or configurations on it. So let's switch uh, to a empty tab and switch to that site. And we can see that we have a new out of the box uh, theme site, which is not having any, any additional customizations or configurations yet applied. So this is now waiting for us to apply the PMP provisioning engine on top of it. So then that's the following step. We have the provisioning template or the BMP file uh, waiting within a file system, and we wanna apply that site uh, or that configuration to that newly created site collection. So let's move back on the PowerShell and make that happen as well. So first of all, uh, we, what we need to do is, to, is connect to that site. Uh, so let's actually connect uh, to that site using the connect SPO online command, and that's a command, uh, command uh, in the, PMP PowerShell. Uh, quickly having a look on the context, uh, we can double check that the context is actually my target and the site's a new site. So that's matching with the site collection which we just created. So therefore uh, we can just apply uh, the PMP uh, file uh, template. So the PMP template on top of it. So let's run the apply SPO provisioning template. And that what's now gonna happen is that the the PowerShell uh, is going to use the PMP provisioning, uh, sorry, the PMP core component, which contains the PMP provisioning uh, engine. And it's going to start uh, manipulating uh, the source site uh, based on uh, the template. So let's do this side by side. 
So we can see that list instances are getting created. So it comp uh, compares to the existing lists. It also would add any columns or side columns or content types to the existing list. We can see that the specification list has been already created. So now if you go to the front page, uh, that front page has not yet been modified. So we're still seeing the old UI uh, because the list instances, the, the views and columns and content types are getting, uh, getting manipulated or double checked uh, that those settings are properly applied. Um, the engine itself supports delta handling um, and it's really important to understand what it actually means is that you're able to reapply this template to existing sites and then uh, the engine will make sure that uh, whenever, you, if you have a template which is having, for example, new configurations or content types in these libraries, those settings would be available uh, within the target site as well. Now we can see that uh, the front page is already getting applied, uh, but we're still using the out of the box office theme within the site. Uh, and in the PowerShell side, we can see that we're applying Compost Looks. Uh, Compost Looks uh, is a relatively uh, big operation. So that takes uh, some time to actually process. It's gonna create uh, the theming files dynamically and apply them to the site. And then now if I, uh, the PowerShell command list has been executed, if I refresh the page, uh, we can see the whole site uh, getting and having that custom branding and look and feel applied, including the welcome page. And now we can also see that the specification library uh, or view to the specification library is successfully applied on the front page of the site as well. So now if we go and have a look on the template site, uh, which is here, a template site, or the my target site, we can see that the, the functionality or the, the configuration is exactly the same. Um, and if we go to the site content view, that's not a site content view, let's go to the site content view. And we can actually see that we have the specification folder created like it was created within the, uh, within the template site as well. So there we go, uh, quite simple uh, a setup uh, from a consume or implementation or from a use it perspective obviously there's a lot of logic behind of the this commentlets or the behind of the bmp provisioning engine but from your uh, perspective when you are using the engine uh, it can be as simple as this one so you're able to actually use an existing site as your template uh, you're able to save the existing site as a bmp file which you can then share to anybody uh, uh, within your whoever you want to share that and then you're able to apply the PMP template file to any of the existing sites. And in this case, we created a new site collection where we applied the template and you will get exactly the same configuration uh, to that site as well. Super, super simple, uh, but extremely, extremely powerful engine. Uh, and in this case, like mentioned, we were using the PowerShell as the, the demo uh, for making this happen. The same PMP file uh, support is included in the provision in the native uh, core component as well. So you're able to take advantage of the PMP file handling in a provider hosted add-in implementation or a web application implementation or a managed code implementation. If you rather want to write some code or if you have a self-service site collection creation process um, uh, implemented within your uh, Office 365 deployment. But that's it. And uh, that's all we're going to do within this video. Uh, so that was a quick update on the June 2016 changes within the engine. And the key change uh, within the engine obviously is the BNP file format support. So we're able to extract existing site to BNP file format and you're able to then use that to apply all of the needed configuration to your existing site as well. Thank you for watching and we'll come up, um, we'll come up with a, a new videos uh, sooner or later. Thank you.